Good afternoon and welcome to Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase. This is our weekly call-in town hall and radio show. I'm Senator Amanda Chase. I represent those of you who live in Chesterfield, Colonial Heights, and Amelia. I represent most of Chesterfield, live in Chesterfield. Um, This is a weekly call-in town hall, and it gives you access to your state representatives, so feel free to call in. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the call-in number, so if you've got paper handy or text this in your notes. It's 804-454-1366. You might save that as a contact in your phone and uh, you can call during the show, those of you who listen regularly. And, um, you know, it's so nice to go in the community and and run into people who who listen to our show. And I really appreciate um, your feedback, especially the positive feedback, right? Everybody likes positive feedback. Uh, But it's great to hear that um, those of you who are listening are tuning in each week and hopefully finding this um, helpful to you. For those of you who are turning in, tuning in for the first time, um, I'm State Senator Amanda Chase. I'm your weekly radio show host. Sometimes you'll hear, um, sometimes we'll have the, you know, meet the governor or let's th- ask the governor. This is ask the senator, I guess. So um, you're welcome to call in. And again, it's 804-454-1366. Um, Senator Suterline, uh, the senator from Roanoke, is going to be calling in today. So he's going to be co-hosting with me today. So I'm really looking forward to that. But just to give you a little background, um, this is my first term in office. I'm actually getting ready to finish my um, second year, uh, my second term. This will be my third session. So um, I guess I'm becoming a veteran at this. But I'm a Christian conservative Republican, and in that order, unapologetically and transparently, I tell you that, as a co-founder of the Transparency Caucus. And um, I ran on term-limiting career politicians and returning the government back to the people. Uh, My goal is to be a representative who is transparent, accessible, and approachable, which is exactly why I said yes when I was asked if I would host this this show. Um, I don't get paid to do this, and um, kind of cracked me up. Someone asked me if I was trying to be the next Laura Ingram. Um, actually, no. Um, I'm actually more of a behind the scenes type of, type of person, and this is actually beyond my comfort zone, but I'm going to do it for you, the people, because I feel like you have a right to know what's going on with your state government. So, you know, we're talking about transparency. I was elected in 2015 and and started in January of 2016 officially. And um, I feel like, you know, I've actually been able to get a lot of things done for you all. Um, One of those in pushing for greater transparency and um, and having this transparency caucus, we actually were able for the first time ever this coming session, you will be able to watch downstream to your computer from the comfort of your own home, our committee meetings. Uh, which will now be downstream uh, streamed live, and so um, I I think that's great because we I want to be inclusive and 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 it wasn't something I did myself I had to have like, support of my colleagues and I appreciate them for seeing the um, necessity and and really what I feel like is a great change in the culture in in politics and, and in government is to make sure that we have a more transparent government so that you, the people, can have access to your representatives. We listen to you. um, We value what you think. And so um, by having access to those meetings, you're able to see what's going on because in the committee meetings is really where most of the work is done. And speaking of committees, I serve on four committees and two subcommittees. Um, I serve on health and education, transportation, local governments, and privileges and elections. And I already mentioned that I co-founded the Transparency Caucus. And um, so I stay very busy between that and and also the radio show. Um, Many of the topics that we're going to address on this show are issues that you all have brought to my attention. And there are many, especially this week. And um, I'm going to give you a little rundown, but I'm going to give you the number again because some of you mentioned to me that you didn't get the number. So it's 804-454-1366. Out in the district this week, um, I want to thank the Deer Hunters for allowing me to come to their banquet at the Cultural Center of India this week in Chester. Um, And then those of you that I saw at the Midlothian Day Parade, um, I was there. I've taken a tour of Bryant Stratton College on Hall Street and... um, I've been working on my bills for this coming session, which will start in January. My top two bills 
are are probably well I have a number of bills I'll probably have about 12 to 15 but the one that I've been focusing on this week would be focusing on December 1 you know we get the uh, the report that's going to come back that's basically going to show us the analysis of the coal ash re- removal and the different options there and I met with a company this week that actually takes coal ash. Remember we were talking about the byproduct of electricity is coal ash. And uh, we've had unlined ponds that are next to the James River, and we were wondering what do we do with this coal ash that is uh, sitting in these unlined ponds next to the James River. Well, this particular vendor that I met with yesterday actually on site can create and produce bricks. So um, that will help drive down the cost of excavation and um, figuring out what to do with these bro- um, turn turn our problem into productivity and, I, and I'm all about that so really excited um, I'd also like to thank the James River Association um, I was at a banquet last night and they awarded me the River Hero Award I was one of um, three recipients and so I want to thank them for their hard work on this bill And, um, you know, look forward to working with them in the future. And the other bill has to do with another email that I received, and that one has to do with insurance costs. And many of you, as we have talked about on our show, you're talking about the continuing rise of your insurance premiums. And the concerns there um, have to do, this particular letter, they were talking about the state corporation commission and and how do insurance companies file their rate increases and it appears in their opinion that the state corporation commission just takes the insurance companies on good faith on the data that they provide so we're we're looking into that um anyway a number of of issues coming up i have a health care insurance cost transparency bill that i'm working on with stakeholders for those of you who are concerned about um, we're all concerned about insurance premiums going sky high on January 1 and I'm trying to get ahead of that and um, working with some of the physicians that serve in the General Assembly and 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 others so um, I also want to mention that this Saturday October the 28th at 3 p.m. I got an email from the Bermuda Advocates for Responsible Development they're having a meeting this Saturday and um, it's at the big White House across from Harrogate Elementary School and they're going to be talking about that proposed Matoka mega site, which is in Bermuda. And they want you to come to that meeting. I'm unable to go that day, but um, for those of you who can, they are having a meeting. Um, also, November 18th, the Tea Party Annual Conference is from 10 to 4 p.m., and that's at the Delta by Marriott. It used to be the former Crown Plaza. Um, another bill that I'm working on, uh, you know, we were talking about DMV said that they were short of funds. So I'm working on the possibility of saving uh, saving us taxpayer money um, and not raising taxes, not increasing fees by going to a single license plate instead of two on your automobile when you go to renew it. So I'm looking for ways to save money and not raise taxes and fees. So I'm going to go ahead and get straight to Senator Suderlin, who is Senator from Roanoke. He represents the 19th district, which includes Salem, Bedford, Carroll, Floyd, um, Franklin County, Montgomery, Roanoke, and Wythe County. Are you there, Senator Suderlin? Yes, I'm here. Good to be with you today. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, to come on, cut to the chase today, and uh uh, I would like to comment for those of you who all have listened in before. Senator Suderlon has been on our show before. He's actually my seatmate, and also I would also add one of the youngest members of the state senate. And um, also, he served as an, a legislative aide prior to coming to the General Assembly, which is great because he has all kinds of insight. Um, he was the legislative aide to Senator Ralph Smith um, for eight years, and um, so. Anyway, it's great to have you today. Yeah, it's good to be on. Uh, I know it takes a while to describe my district as it goes all over <laughs> southwest. Yes, I'm thankful I, I just uh, have three counties. <laughs> yeah, I tell folks whenever you hear Ralph Northam talk about how much he uh, believes in nonpartisan redistricting, just know he voted for my district that cuts up eight different localities. <laughs> so. 
yeah, you were telling me that your district, it takes quite some time to go from one side of your district to the other. But um, I want y'all to stay tuned. When we come back from the break, we're going to be discussing, um, many of you may have seen in the Richmond Time Dispatch, there was an article that described Dominion's grip on Virginia politics. Maybe loosening Dominion rules is Dominion's grip on political power at a crossroads. And so we're going to be discussing that. It's going to be an interesting show today, so I know you're going to want to stay tuned. And uh, we'll be right back after the break with Senator Suderlein. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Kim Warburton, the Executive Director of the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond. For over 34 years, the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond has been a safe haven and a loving refuge to thousands of young moms and dads of the greater RVA community who need compassionate care and hope in the midst of an unplanned pregnancy. Join us for our 2017 annual gala as we share more about the ways that God is saving lives through this ministry. Stay tuned for this special invitation. Hi, I'm J.J. Jasper inviting you to join me Thursday night, November the 16th at the Richmond Marriott for the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond 2017 Annual Gala. As a morning on-air personality and best-selling author, I know you'll be encouraged and inspired. We'll laugh together. Plus, it's for a great cause, celebrating the important work of PRC in the Richmond area. Find out more at friendsofprcrichmond.org or call 804-673-4150. Attention, sorry I'm talking a little loud because I want to reach people with a hearing problem. Do you want to hear better for just $299? Yes, not thousands, but for $299, you can hear all the sounds you've been missing for years. Hearing Help Express has been helping people hear better, selling top quality hearing aids for over 30 years. Now's your best chance to hear better with hearing aids for only $299, plus a free 45-day home trial offer and you don't even need to leave your home or get a hearing test call now to start your risk-free 45-day home trial offer call 888-451-2042 888-451-2042 for free hearing help consultation learn how hearing help express can improve the quality of your life visit us online now at hearinghelp.com or call 888-451-2042 888-451-2042 Old Dominion University football is back for 2017. Duhart to the 15 and 10 to the 5. Jonathan Duhart diving at the 1. Head coach Bobby Wilder returns to lead a Monarch squad coming off a 10-win season and a Bahamas Bowl championship. Intercepted in the end zone. That's Brandon Addison. Hi, this is Ted Alexander. Join Andy Mishaw, Doug Ripley, and me for all the action all season long here on Richmond's home for ODU Athletics. WNTW, 820 AM and 97.7 FM, The Answer. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing ASAP. We're looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to us. And we'll give you our feedback. And if we like what we read, we will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. We handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, call Page Publishing now for your free author submission kit. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. 888-785-0618. 888-785-0618. That's 888-785-0618. It's all about the economy. Get this economy going. Keep moving the ball down the field. Stop shooting your own people in the back. Stop bayonetting your own soldiers in the foxhole. And actually act like the American people want you to be in Washington, D.C. to do something for them. Tune in to Laura Ingram, weekdays, 10 a.m. to noon, here on Richmond's Choice for Conservative Talk Radio, WNTW, 820 a.m. and 97.7 FM, The Answer. If you are just tuning in to 
Cut to the chase with Senator Chase for the first time. Here's the number you can call in. It's 804-454-1366. Myself and Senator Suderline from Roanoke are here today to answer any question you may have. Um, we're particularly going to talk, I always try to have some type of issue to discuss in case, um, just to kind of generate some discussion here at the beginning of our town hall. But, um, and I try to pick newsworthy ideas, um, taking a look in the paper. And a lot of times, I think the Richmond Times-Dispatch does a great job of identifying state issues that are coming up. And uh, one of the issues that has come up recently is the, the rate freeze. And what are we talking about here? I mean, how does this, why are we even talking about this on the show, right? You want to make sure that you have electricity in your house, right? Everybody wants to make sure it's affordable. So a lot of people believe that that's a free market system. Well, let me just tell you, it's not. It is highly regulated. Um, the, the utilities are highly regulated. And, um, and so they are, they are governed by a number of different uh, entities, one being the Virginia State Corporation Commission and also the General Assembly. Um, we pass laws and, um, you know, we, and, and so there, there's been a number of different topics come up. One, does, the, does Dominion affect uh, politicians? Um, are, are they in our back pockets? Do we just listen to Dominion? Um, I think those of you who see my bills, I think I'm pretty fair. I, I try to, um, when somebody does something right, an organization does right, then, then I applaud them. If I feel like they have room for improvement, then we work on that too. So um, I'm not, I'm for everybody and I'm for everybody working for the people. And so that's what we strive for. And um, so we're going to have an honest discussion. And I've asked Senator Suderline uh, to come on today. Because so um, former Virginia Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli and Senator Chap Peterson um, had, had brought this up. And, and Senator Suderline, you also uh, had, had actually co-patroned with this bill. And it has to do with support repealing the rate freeze law that stops regulators from reviewing Dominion Energy's earnings. And so why don't we start with just a recap? Why don't you just kind of tell folks a little bit about the State Corporation Commission and kind of their, their role and their function? Yeah, sure. Um, the State Corporation Commission is something that's been a major part of Virginia government uh, since the 1902 Constitution. Uh, back then, uh, railroads uh, companies were very dominant in Virginia in the economy and also having a outsized role um, of influence at the General Assembly. And the State Corporation Commission, among its different responsibilities, was to review uh, the rates of uh, the railroads and how they operated uh, and several policies with them. It later included the uh, electric utilities in a big way, and that's the entity most uh, discussed with the regulations of the State Corporation Commission now. And most of your listeners will remember up until a few years ago uh, when their power rates would get especially high, uh, they would often find that they would get a refund from the power company uh, the next year. And the reason they got the refund was because the State Corporation Commission was reviewing the uh, rates that the Dominion, in, in your constituents' case and my constituents' case, is a company called Appalachian Power, that those companies were charging um, electric rate payers. And they found that they were overcharging them. Uh, Dominion and uh, Appalachian Power are both guaranteed uh, profit based on the expenses that they put out and sometimes that profit uh, was exceeding uh, what they were supposed to get under the State Corporation Commission's review. Unfortunately in 2015 um, those reviews were suspended and I think we'll probably talk a little later about why that occurred but, but that's the situation there. Now last month the Virginia Supreme Court upheld the, the, a state law that suspends regulatory review of electric rates. And in fact, the court ruled six to one in favor of a 2015 law which shields utilities from giving refunds or having to lower their rates and prevents them from raising their base rates for several years. Um, now, I know that you were working as a legislative aide during that time period, so you probably remember the floor discussion. Um, and, and I was looking back at that particular law, it seemed like it had 
most of the General Assembly in support of that that bill. So let's let's talk about the environment and why one would vote in favor of what seems like what it seems so non-transparent. You know, to to have the state corporation commission not to to ha- to have to suspend their regulatory review. Yeah, well, it definitely isn't transparent because we're not able as ratepayers to have the state corporation commission reviewing it to see uh, what we should be paying based on the uh, policies there. But what happened in 2015 uh, was uh, led by Dominion and uh, Appalachian Power eventually was involved in it at the end. Uh, But from the beginning, Dominion was trying to get the rates freeze um, at the current rate and there's several rates. Uh, there's the base rate, which is what we're discussing right now, and that's what got frozen. There's several other uh, rate adjustment clauses that also go into your electric bill, but and those are are continuing to move. But the base rate was frozen uh, by the 2015 law, and the argument that they made to Republicans, which was the argument that Dominion needed to make the most because Republicans controlled both chambers of the General Assembly was that under the Obama administration's clean power plan, prices on energy was going to go up and would go up significantly. And they tried to sell their uh, the Republicans in the General Assembly, which convincing them that an Obama policy would be harmful wasn't that difficult, uh, even though the policy was a long way from being implemented. They said that, we need to do this because otherwise the rates will go up and your constituents will have to pay much higher electric rates. Now, several of us at the time were highly skeptical of it. Um, Dominion, as a publicly traded company, has a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders, um, and they don't have an interest in in trying to make sure that they pay more out of it instead of making sure that the rate payers paying what the state corporation commission would, would regularly consider a fair rate, but they got the general assembly to agree to it. Um, the clean power plan was not enacted. Uh, Donald Trump was elected president. Uh, Scott Pruitt was appointed the head of the EPA. Uh, and then even before that, uh, federal courts had, uh, slowed even the possible implementation of the clean power plan down. So the justification, um, for the 2015 law is is completely gone. So what even so the they ba- so they basically said this is to shield customers from rate increases. I mean that was how they I guess packaged this as um, something beneficial, something that would help our constituents um, who were concerned. Now we're going to go to a 4 minute break and uh, when we come back we're going to continue to talk about the, the the changes at at the top of the at the top of the ticket with the Trump administration and what happens with the clean power plan and and what should we do going forward. So when we come back from the break, that's what we're going to discuss. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase, and you are welcome to call in today. It's 804-454-1366. Senator Suderlon, state senator from Roanoke County, and myself are here today to answer your calls. Again, it's 804-454-1366, and we welcome your comments. And um, it's interesting. I um, I remember my first year that I was in office, and I signed on as a co-patron to Senator Cervell's, I'll just call it the coal ash bill. And I remember we just finished voting on the floor of the Senate, and I got a call from my aide, and she said, Amanda, uh, Dominion is here and they're sitting on your sofa right now. Are you on your way? And I said, yes, I am. Uh, what would they like to discuss? And they're like, well, they would like to discuss your, the coal ash bill that you signed on to. And so, um, you know, that was, that was really, um, an eye-opening experience and, and they were very kind, but they were like, if you're going to sign on to bill, could you at least just let us know and give us a courtesy <laughs> Um, and, and I was like, well, um, sure, you know, I didn't know I needed to get permission to, um, put, to sign on to a, a coal ash bill. But, um, anyway, I, I do appreciate, um, 
I appreciate all the comments that people have made uh, for, you know, for a number of reasons. Um, I, I'm coming in as a newbie, okay? This is only my third session that I'm in office, and, um, and, and I will tell you, Dominion does give to all legislators um, across the board, and, um, you know, but I, I have really tried to stick to what I feel like is right for my district. I, I'm not going to uh, change how I vote, or it's not going to change the way I think about different things. And um, I, I've been, and, and that's exactly why I, I embraced the coal ash bill because I felt like that there was a better way to uh, to take a look at the study. We needed to wait until the study was done on the removal of coal ash before. We allowed any more solid waste permits to be issued. And so um, I would tell you that not all legislators are influenced um, by Dominion. Um, I, I certainly, I don't have an adversarial relationship with Dominion. I mean, I do talk to them. I mean, we have to. I mean, they are a utility, and I think we have to have healthy relationships with them. Um, but I am a firm believer in transparency. And, you know, while I understand you know, at that particular point, the environment was to, you know, shield customers from rate increases. Um, you know, I, I support transparency more. And so um, I'm, I'm still going to listen to both sides. I did ask for Dominion's position um, on Senate Bill 1349, and I appreciate them putting that together for me because I asked for it kind of last minute and uh, got it earlier today. But, but, but you know, they, they do believe that here in Virginia – Senate Bill 1349 is working as the General Assembly intended. Um, Dominion Energy's residential and industrial rates are lower today than they were when Senate Bill 1349 was enacted. Um, the 2015 legislation provides an immediate rate cut and has delivered on the promise of stable rates. And typical customer rates have remained well below the national D.C. metro and East Coast average Dominion has been very low residential, they have had very low residential rates and the lowest industrial rates among the CNBC top 10 states for business. Um, the other thing that they wanted to note is that the company absorbed $85 million in a fuel expenses, in fuel expenses due to the 2014 polar vortex, which cut rates for both industrial and residential consumers in 2015. Uh, and two other points is that the, co the company has also absorbed millions in weather-related expenses to report, repair storm damage, like Hurricane Matthew, for example, with no cost impact to customers. And as a result of Senate Bill 1349, the one that was passed in 2015, Dominion Energy has dramatically expanded its low-income energy assistance program at stakeholder expense and paired the project with an innovative company-funded weatherized program for veterans as well as low-income elderly and disabled customers. So I want to be fair and, and present that as well. Um, I still go back to transparency, and I feel like that we should, um, you know, since we're no longer under this Obama era carbon regulation for power, you know, the clean power plan, you know, the, the, the environment has changed. I think we should, and, and Senator Suderlon put the bill in last year, and I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards supporting that simply because I think we should be more transparent. And we're already going to a break, Senator Suderlon. But whenever we come back, um, Senator Suderlon is going to offer his comments, and we welcome you to call in. As our listener, give us your thoughts, 804-454-1366. Let us know what you think. If your financial plan is even slightly out of tune, you may be paying too much for taxes, exposing yourself to too much risk, or retiring without a sound income plan. Listen to WNTW AM 820, The Answer, on Saturdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 8.30 a.m. to Financially Tuned with Big John Pulowski of Norseman Advisory Group. You can contact Big John at 757-223-1559 or visit the website at norsemanagi.com. 
five days a week at the crack of dawn. John Fredericks gives you exclusive world-class non-stop coverage of our political madhouse. But what does he do on a Saturday? Saturday. 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 Saturday, noon till 3, it's the all-new Best of John Fredericks show. Best guests, best interviews, Best of John Fredericks. Saturdays at noon on WNTW AM 820, The Answer. Hey, I'm Kim Warburton, the Executive Director of the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond. For over 34 years, the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond has been a safe haven and a loving refuge to thousands of young moms and dads of the greater RVA community who need compassionate care and hope in the midst of an unplanned pregnancy. Join us for our 2017 annual gala as we share more about the ways that God is saving lives through this ministry. Stay tuned for this special invitation. Hi, I'm J.J. Jasper inviting you to join me Thursday night, November the 16th at the Richmond Marriott for the Pregnancy Resource Center of Metro Richmond 2017 Annual Gala. As the morning on-air personality and best-selling author, I know you'll be encouraged and inspired. We'll laugh together. Plus, it's for a great cause, celebrating the important work of PRC in the Richmond area. Find out more at friendsofprcrichmond.org or call 804-673-4150. Money, 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 money. You got to have it. When you need it, what do you do? If you don't have a rich uncle, call Lending Tree. With us, hundreds of banks compete for your business, so you'll get loans with competitive interest rates and in some cases with no closing costs. So here's the deal. If you need money, call us. Do you want to refinance your current loan? Are you 62 or older and interested in a reverse mortgage? Then call Lending Tree now. 800-470-1378, 800-470-1378, 800-470-1378, 800-470-1378. We've closed over $250 billion in loans. We know what we're doing and can help you. Call right now for a free quote. 800-470-1378, 800-470-1378, That's 800-470-1378. NMLS number 1136. This is State Senator Amanda Chase and Senator David Suderline from Roanoke County. And Senator Suderline actually partnered with Senator Chapman, Chat Peterson from Fairfax City last session on a bill that would have repealed the rate freeze law. Unfortunately, the measure died early in the Senate Commerce and Labor Committee and attempts to revive it during the session illustrated. Um, this bill was going nowhere. Um, and and I, I like what you said here. It says, as a regulated monopoly, Dominion is very involved at the General Assembly and the State Corporation Commission is constitutionally responsible for overseeing a lot of things related to Dominion's business. Unfortunately, They've been able to convince the General Assembly to kidnap the State Corporation Commission's authority. So I take it you're going to probably reintroduce this bill next session. Is that correct? Senator Suderline? It was Senator Peterson's bill um, last year, and I think he'll introduce it again. I certainly think that the rate freeze uh, should end. We should return for review of the rates of the Constitution provides to make sure that ratepayers aren't overcharged. That's certainly my hope. Yeah, it, and and I'm thinking, I mean, have you talked to um, Senator Wagner, who is the chairman of uh, that particular committee that uh, killed the bill last time? Let's see. Senate Commerce and Labor, that's right. So that would be his committee, just to get a feel. Is, you know, now that we have Trump in there, um, and, uh, you know, the EPA, as you mentioned earlier, Scott Pruitt has relaxed some of the EPA requirements for a number of things, including coal ash. Do you think that's something that the General Assembly and that committee would, would approve this time? Well, it was Senator Wagner's uh, bill in 2015 that first froze the rates. Um, and I think that some of the chief proponents of the bill then, they still like it just like Dominion does as your statement that you read from them earlier indicated they say it's working just as they intended and it's providing stability now the rates are so 
profitable because they are higher than they are supposed to be. The State Corporation Commission and has pointed out that millions of dollars uh, every are being overpaid by rate payers um, in the Dominion and AEP, Appalachian Power Service areas, which account for almost three-quarters of the state. Uh, so most everyone listening to this uh, is overpaying for their electric bills right now, according to the State Corporation Commission. Uh, the exact amount we don't know because we have the rate freeze, but the estimates are, are very high, and um, to say that they're stable is accurate, but it, it's like saying that, you know, the inverse of this, saying your paycheck is, you know, reliably stable for years when uh, it never goes up. In this case, your electric rates should be going down um, significantly because of the cost of fuel. I mean, if we would have um, had a way where you could have made a deal with your local uh, fueling station to um, freeze the rate you were paying for gasoline a few years ago, unleaded, and said, hey, I don't want it to go up. And he says, sure, I'll make that deal with you. Uh, you clearly would have made the wrong deal because you've seen fuel prices go down significantly since then. Uh, that's not uh, completely um, – different than what's actually happening right now with the State Corporation Commission. Yes, the Supreme Court did rule in uh, in the utilities' favor. Uh, Justice Mims uh, had a, a very good dissent on it. I think that he was right. Uh, if we're going to say that there can be these uh, suspension of rate reviews for a few years, what's to say that we can't just do it indefinitely? Mm -hmm. And that you know, and the State Corporation Commission is clearly given this authority to do these reviews in the Constitution and has had that authority uh, for more than 100 years in, in this responsibility. Well, it's interesting. The State Co Corporation Commission report said that Dominion's excess earnings could have been as high as $426 million if not for my um, $174 million coal ash bill. Cleanup cost, um, it listed as expenses. Um, and it says that Dominion took in as much as $252 million above its authorized return in 2016. Because of how customer refunds are calculated, not all of that money would be due back to rate payers, but Dominion would have owed its customers between $133 million and $176 million for 2015 and 2016 if the rate freeze weren't in effect validating your point. So, um, and it's interesting, there was a meeting apparently and um my understanding in that meeting the state corporation commission was not even allowed to present its case and when asked why it was basically said that they would be able to present at a later time but that doesn't seem to be the history um as we can see the few number of meetings that the state corporate corporation commission has has presented so um I'm looking for that uh, the number there in my notes here, but um, I think you make very valid valid points, and um, you know it's it's interesting. Um, it you know the state corporation commission is an independent regulator, and there there was a lot of tension between who had the final authority, the general assembly or the state corporation commission. Um, but it's you know it just it is interesting that it, and I and I I mean I hate to say it but <laughs> uh, it's it's both sides of the aisle here you know that that I, and I just think that um, you know what what would you think I mean I know there was a bill put in last last time that said that you know the legislators could not be allowed to receive campaign contributions from Dominion. What do you think? Yeah, so Senator Peterson had a bill um, separate from our uh, the bill on the rate freeze that would say if you're a regulated utility, uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but the short version, if you're a regulated utility, which would definitely hit Dominion, you're not able to give um, politically. Uh, Dominion uh, strongly opposed that bill, and their um, press secretary had some very strong words for Senator Peterson in that bill. Mm -hmm. um, the Dominion is the um, largest uh, 
corporate contributor uh, to candidates for the General Assembly. Um, you know, it's and interesting. It has been for a long time, and they they were they're the Democratic Party's uh, largest um, contributor too. Um, I personally have chosen not to accept funds um, from Dominion or Appalachian Power. Uh, I got elected in the year after the rate freeze was already in effect, and I just couldn't accept funds um, that I knew that they were getting excess profits while my folks were paying rates that they should. I think the question of are we going to prohibit one group um, from giving politically uh it's one thing for us to not accept the funds. It's not if we're going to deny their ability to do it uh, when we're not also talking about uh, denying other entities. So I think that's something that Senator Peterson's got to continue making the case for because um, there's a lot of speech arguments involved there. Yeah, and, and my I remember my first year. Gosh, we're already going to a break. But um, I introduced a similar bill that would outlaw any out-of-state financial contributions because we were having too many out-of-state dollars influencing our elections and was told it was unconstitutional, that it was considered freedom of speech, and that basically they should be allowed to contribute. Well, Senator Suderlund, thanks so much for coming on today. Stay tuned for the final segment of Cut to the Chase. We'll be right back. That's why we are here on the show, because we don't want anybody in this world right now to have to settle for the situation they're in if they want more. There's no reason for it. Everyone has a great amount of power in their life to live the life that they want to live. Tune in to The Great People Show, live Thursdays 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and Saturdays 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Here on Richmond's Choice for Inspirational Talk Radio, WNTW 820 a.m. and 97.7 FM. The Answer. This Sunday morning, from 11 a.m. till noon, you're invited to join the Congregation of Community Bainbridge Baptist Church, 1101 Bainbridge Street in Richmond, for their Sunday morning worship service. You'll hear an inspiring message from the pastor, Dr. Mike McClary. That's this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on AM820 WNTW, where you find the answer. Want to fly somewhere? Looking for cheap flights or cheap tickets? Then call. That's right. Call the low-cost airline travel hotline now for prices so low we can't publish them anywhere. Low-cost airlines has all kinds of cheap travel deals. Fly domestically and save up to 75%. You can even fly internationally and save even more. Yes, fly anywhere in the world and save a lot of money on your plane tickets. We'll even save you money with cheap travel deals on hotels, rental cars, even complete travel packages. So don't book your tickets until you call us first for the absolute cheapest price. Prices on U.S. and international airline tickets and hotels. Call right now for prices so low they can't be published. Travel experts are here 24 7 to help. 800 368 5184. 800 368 5184. 800 368 5184. 800 368 5184. If you're struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? We can help you if you qualify. Your student loans can be taken out of default. We can stop the wage garnishments, stop the collection calls, and stop the seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and see if we can help you reduce your student loan payments. One quick 10-minute call could solve them right now. So call the Student Loan Helpline now. 800-709-4395, 800-709-4395, 800-709-4395, 800-709-4395. This is a fee-based document preparation service to help you access free government programs. Call for complete details not available in all states. Well, welcome back to the final segment of Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase on WNTW The Answer. And, um, you know, we've had a very, and I hope you found today's discussion interesting, at least, um, talking about uh, the rate reviews. And and I I know sometimes we get in the weeds on some of these shows, but um, 
I think it's important for people to understand what we do on the General Assembly and how it affects real people. Um, you know, I think whenever I first came to the General Assembly, I had no idea how regulated the um, the energy industry is, and um, it's it's it gets very complicated. But um, you know, I, I welcome anybody that wants to donate to my campaign. They are welcome to give as much as they want, and um, I'm going to continue to vote my conscience. And and I have been a, a firm believer of that. And if you look at my voting record, it will justify that. Um, but I I want to remind you that on Tuesday, November the seventh, I want you to circle that date on your calendar because that is election day here in Virginia, and. It's important that you vote. And if you're not going to be in town, if you're working more than 12 hours and you're not going to be in the district on Election Day, you have until Tuesday, October the 31st, okay, that's next Tuesday, to request an absentee ballot. Now, what I would suggest to you is that you do a Google search for your local registrar and you go in person and fill out that absentee ballot. That way you can do it in person because you don't want that to get lost in the mail. I mean, you can apply online absentee. You can also imply, you can also apply in person and vote absentee. And um, I think that's the way to go. Just make sure that you remember to bring your Virginia DMV license or your ID card, okay? Because you need to, uh, you need to show that. But there are a number of reasons that you can vote absentee. Um, some folks who are... Um, they have a spouse or dependent living with a member um, who is an active duty merchant, marine, or armed forces. Um, some people are um, have a reason for pregnancy. That is, that is apparently a reason that you can vote absentee. Um, you're confined awaiting trial. Um, you have a disability or illness. You are primarily and personally responsible for the care of a disabled, ill family member confined at home. I mean, there are a number of reasons. Students, um, student attending college or university outside of a locality of residence in Virginia, you can vote absentee. Um, and so let's talk about Election Day itself. You have from 6 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. on Election Day. And if you remember, if you work 11 more hours between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m., you can vote absentee. If you're a first responder or a member, like a member of law enforcement, a firefighter, EMT, search and rescue, that's another reason you can vote absentee. So take advantage of it. I mean, every vote counts, and we're going to need every vote. Um, that's for sure, sure. And exercise your right. Just That's just an important thing to do. Next week, former Lieutenant Governor John Hager is going to be on our show, so you will definitely want to tune in next week. He has a new book that's out, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Just so much history with the Commonwealth. Such a fascinating person to talk to. Stay tuned next Thursday for Cut to the Chase with Senator Chase.